Hi, I'm Michael Marmira. Um, I'm a associate professor of neurology at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia. And um, I'll be speaking with uh, Dr. Chris Diener uh, about the topic of medication overuse headache in patients with chronic migraine. Uh, Dr. Diener, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm uh, Hans Christoph Diener. I'm uh, emeritus professor of neurology. And at present, I'm the head of the Department of Neuroepidemiology at the University of Duisburg Essen. Medication overuse headache is uh, defined by headache classification as um, worsening headache in association with acute medication use. Uh, and the, for patients who take uh, things like triptans or combination analgesics or opioids or ergotamines, uh, the, the threshold is 10 days per month or more. And for patients taking simple analgesics like naproxen, aspirin, uh, paracetamol, it's been 15 days or more a month. Um, and it's also said in the classification that if someone has medication overuse headache, if they stop taking the medication, they usually, but don't always uh, improve. Um, so uh, Dr. Dieter, you've written a lot about medication overuse headache. Uh, what's been your experience and what do you think people should know about it uh, in practice? Yeah, this, this, or, you know, I'm an old man. So this started in 1975 when I observed for the first time females who came to see us with daily headaches and they were terrible. And we found out that they took combination drugs containing ergotamine every day. And when we stopped the intake, everything got worse for about a week and then they improved. And some of them, when they were older than 65 years, even became totally headache-free or migraine-free. And this triggered our idea that most probably if some people take too much acute medication, so migraine can worsen, can worsen and move to chronic migraine. And then the International Headache Society came with the definition of medication overuse headache. And so we see it our, in our center all the time. Myself, I work in a tertiary headache center. So we see it's a large percentage. I mean, sometimes it's difficult to know um, if it's the medication is making things worse or they're just taking the medication because of uncontrolled migraine. Um, are there any things that you kind of look at in trying to make this determination in terms of is it the medicine or not? Um, yeah, this is this is very difficult. And in most patients, you cannot decide, you know, what, what triggered this. But one sign that most probably the the intake triggers a headache is if these people have additional dependence behavior or addictive behavior, you know, laxatives or, for example, nasal drops or eye drops or sleeping pills. This is more an indication that the medication leads to the worsening of the headache. Sometimes it's unclear. It's so sort of almost a behavioral issue. And I should say that this is more of a problem for people that have migraine. So someone who, say, uh, takes aspirin because they have stroke, they're not going to start developing migraine. Uh, is that been your experience? That's correct. And one typical example is a cluster headache. You know, we have patients who inject sumatriptan twice a day for three months uh, if they have cluster headache and they will not get a chronic headache. I think one, one, the one exception, I believe they said, if you have a history of migraine or a family history, even if you have cluster headache, you may still uh, develop medication overuse. Yeah, so that's probably the migraine genes that you need. So there's been several, you know, papers about treatment of plus, uh, medication overuse and chronic migraine and addressing the, these different approaches. There's been some, you know, in, in Europe recently and in the States, um, um, com kind of comparing different approaches. I think the traditional approach has been definitely you want to consider withdrawing the medication uh, if you think, if you suspect that they have medication overuse. And I think everyone would agree that education is important, that you really have to at least explain it to the patient that this, this could potentially be worsening their headache or be the cause of their headache in some cases. Um, can you talk a little bit about these, you know, the, your approach to treatment and some of these recent studies uh, that have looked at this? As you know, we, we wrote European and German guidelines on this. And the first step is usually teaching uh, patients and education. And there are a number of randomized trials, in particular from Scandinavia, which show that this is successful in Italy in about 30 to 50% of patients. And if patients fail, we changed our strategy in the last few years because the next step then is the initiation of uh, 
uh, prophylactic therapy, both medical and non-medical. And we have now, I think, evidence for tupiramate, onabotulinum toxin A, and some monoclonal antibodies that they are effective in people with medication overuse and medication overuse headache. And if this fails, then the next step would be either pausing if uh, the drugs are not addictive like tryptans or withdrawal if people overuse opioids, which is very rare in Europe because the physicians in Europe don't prescribe opioids for headache, but it, which is very different uh, in the United States. It's become a little less common. What we're seeing now is that we're not seeing primary care doctors start opioids for migraine. There was a recent study uh, published in neurology um, looking at you know, treatment uh, strategies for medication overuse. In the study, they really compared just two strategies, not withdrawal. And one was um, starting a preventive therapy and then changing, not allowing you to continue taking your overuse medicine and switching to a different medication. So it could be a trip. If you were taking, say, a combination analgesic, you might switch them to a trip down. Um, the other strategy was to simply start preventive therapy uh, in, in, you know, you're doing your normal education but you're not specifically asking them to stop their medication. And it, it turned out that both groups did about the same. Uh, there were some differences. Patients with anxiety um, didn't do as well with the switching. Patients with a very frequent headache, they did uh, better with the switching. But for the most part, both approaches were successful. So I think this you know, is really, to me, makes me think that we want to try to individualize the therapy for our patients. You know, Not everyone is withdrawal may be the best strategy for some people, but not for everyone. Um, and certainly preventive therapies, yeah, it seems like they can be effective um, even in patients that have medication overuse. So we, we were involved in the um, epinezumab studies and uh, as investigators, and we did publish some information. Did you want to talk a little bit about what we found in our patients with chronic migraine and medication overuse headache. The population with chronic migraine, about 50% of these patients had medication overuse, not necessarily all medication overuse headache, which means there were a few who had headaches on 10 to 15 days per month. But when in the group which received eptinizumab, uh, the migraine improved uh, compared to placebo, and this was a big difference. And there was also a reduction in the intake of acute medication. And I think this tells you that you not always have to start with pausing or withdrawal. I think it's fair to start with preventive therapy with a monoclonal antibody, for example. And if this fails, then you have to withdraw. But this pausing or withdrawal is much easier if the patient is on preventive medication because the preventive medication will take away some of the withdrawal symptoms uh, which the patients like. But there is another point. When I start to talk to a patient about this, my first sentence always is, you have to change your life. You have to start all over again. And this is not only about taking medications. It's also about changing your lifestyle. You have to exercise. You have to do relaxation. You have to do stress management. And we do all this kind of teaching in separate sessions. Uh, and I think only the combination of medical therapy on one side and non-medical therapy is really successful. Absolutely. Behavioral treatments. We have our patients work with a psychologist on the first visit, and then we'll have follow-up visits after that. It, it's very important. And sometimes people were taking these medications, they don't even work. Um, and they're just taking it because I got to do something about it. And that's that. I think that's a real problem, too. I think the education is very important. And I think patients, um, you know, working together and you're, you're, you're getting them to do all these kind of lifestyle interventions that's very really important. It's not just about the medication. Has your practice changed because of these recent studies? Yeah, it has. It has. And this was, let's say, a very pleasant surprise that these drugs and new monoclonal antibodies also work in people who have medication overuse and medication overuse headache. Uh, and this makes the life of these patients much, much better. But remember, when we go back, the background of our first pyramid study in this group, which I did with Peter Goatsby, the hypothesis was that topiramate would not work in people with medication overuse. And to our big surprise, it worked. So the first study basically disproved our hypothesis. And then this result was replicated with uh, Botox, for example, and some monoclonal antibodies. Yeah, I agree. I think that um, in some ways, it's not that surprising if you think that someone who takes something 
and it actually works, maybe something like a preventive therapy will work well. Uh, whereas someone who says nothing works for my migraine, I almost worry more about those people. I think I've, I've changed a lot of my language about how I talk about medication overuse with patients. So I used to, I never really understood why simple analgesics would make migraine worse. And I'm not sure that they do, but there's often a behavioral issue, as you said. Uh, but what I, what I don't say to patients now is you won't get better because you're taking this medication, unless there's a very clear um, cause and effect. They started taking triptans every day, they're doing worse. I usually say, you know, this could be a problem, but I'm not sure. Why don't we treat you and see how you do? And so I don't, I don't use that language where I say you'll never get better because you're taking acute medication too often. Um, so I've, I've changed that. I've changed not, I still, the practice not necessarily that much different. Uh, we still do all the non, you know, behavioral, non-pharmacological things, but I, I try to use different language in how I uh, characterize the disorder now. I changed my language. I no longer say withdrawal. I say pause, pausing of acute medication, because I don't want to give people the impression uh, that they are addicted. Uh, and then I think makes it easier for them to accept, at least to test this, whether they do better if they pause the acute medication. It's been a real pleasure to see these you know, new studies come out. And I think it's been uh, uh, really helpful. And a lot, of, a lot of our, you know, when, when you speak to people about these studies, they say, you know, that's actually kind of what I have seen in my practice. I will say that, you know, these studies did not really look at people that were on opioids or barbiturates on a frequent basis. So you can't really say that these studies are applicable to those patients. So those patients may need more intensive care or infusion therapies and things like that. So uh, that's the one thing we really can't comment on right now. All right, well, thank you. Thank you very much.